Pilot Topics is sponsored by AVTutorials.com. They offer interactive, easy-to-learn pilot training for Windows, Mac, and iPad. Now, let's join Steve and Russ. Welcome to Quick Pilot Topics, episode number 10. I'm Steve, an airline pilot, flight instructor, flight engineer, previous examiner, and an AMP mechanic. I'm joined today by my brother, Russ. He's got an awesome question today, as always. So, Russ, what have you got for us? So, I've got a really exciting topic to talk about here. It's called RAIM. R-A-I-M, as in monitoring. What the heck is this? Did pilots care? Oh, I'm so glad you asked because, I mean, this is just a thrilling topic. This <laughs> uh, this just blows me away. It's so exciting to talk about. Uh, of course, I'm being a little sarcastic. Right. Uh, because uh, mm -hmm. it, it's really about as exciting as watching the grass grow. Uh, but anyway, it's something that any pilot who uses GPS really should know about. So RAIM stands for Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring. I kind of wish that they had thought of a better word for it that rolls off the tongue better. Uh, but anyway, it's a fancy phrase for a GPS unit's ability to perform self-monitoring. And RAIM ensures that the GPS unit is receiving quality information from the satellites that it needs. Think of it as fault detection for a GPS unit. So why do we care? Doesn't it just work and do its thing? Uh, you know, when it comes to your car GPS, yes, but your airplane GPS, it's a different story. We have to have some knowledge about RAIM because not all GPS units have this capability. And this will determine what you can and cannot do with that GPS unit. Basically, if you're performing performance-based navigation and RNAV approaches, you've got to have RAIM. Performance-based navigation is an IFR navigation method, which is a lengthy topic by itself. We're not going to discuss it here, but uh, let me continue on. GPS units that don't have RAIM are typically VFR-only panel-mounted GPS units or VFR-only handhelds. One reason these units are VFR-only is because they don't have RAIM. They do not have the ability to alert the pilot if insufficient satellite data is occurring. This explains why these VFR-only units cannot be used for IFR operations. Oh. You know, also, VFR-only panel-mounted GPS units might not have the antennas installed in the fuselage in the most optimized way, the way of an IFR GPS would. VFR-only handheld GPS units might not get proper satellite reception because the antenna is blocked by the interior or the wings or something like that. So the bottom line is that VFR-only GPS units usually cannot get all the required satellites they need, and they cannot be used for IFR. In fact, the FAA advises that they cannot even be used as the sole source of navigation for VFR operations. Huh. Yeah, the FAA indicates that you still have to use other forms of navigation. So, you know, to summarize, think of RAIM as the thing that tells you the same as your car's GPS, lost satellite reception. Maybe you've heard that. Sure, yeah. You don't want to hear this while you're relying on it for IFR operations. Nope. So this sounds like your GPS unit must have RAIM if you're operating IFR. Well, let's confuse things even further. Not necessarily. Some IFR-approved GPS units don't have RAIM, and these systems require the pilot to also use alternate navigation means such as VOR, DME, or IRS. But if your IFR-approved GPS does have RAIM, then there's no need to monitor these alternate navigation sources. Okay. Does a pilot need to know how RAIM works? It's not entirely essential to know the nuts and bolts of it, but RAIM basically searches to find five reliable satellite sources. Some GPS systems only search for four satellite sources, but those systems require you to enter the altimeter setting manually, and this is called barrow aiding. If the RAIM does not find the five satellites it needs, or four if it's a barrow aiding system, one of two messages will be shown. Number one, the integrity of the navigation solution can't be determined due to lack of satellites, or number two, the RAIM monitoring system itself has errors. Either way, without RAIM, you can't assure the accuracy of the GPS signal or the navigation solution. So, if a pilot is conducting IFR flight with an IFR-approved GPS that has RAIM capability, does the pilot simply take off and assume all is working properly 
unless a RAIM alerting message is shown? Well, that's certainly one way to do it. Uh, we don't quite recommend that, though. The official guidance is that a pilot should check NOTAMs. A call to flight service with a request for NOTAMs dealing with RAIM availability should be made. Or a computerized weather briefing should include these RAIM NOTAMs. If there are NOTAMs for RAIM availability that affect your flight, you should be prepared to use alternate navigation methods. Finally, there are other implications for RAIM availability which affect instrument approaches, and there are requirements for going missed approach inside the final approach fix if a RAIM alerting message appears. So pilots are urged to read the Aeronautical Information Manual for all this information, and also read your GPS manufacturer's documentation as well. So that about covers it, and uh, great question. I'm sorry it wasn't a more interesting topic today, but uh, we hope the next one will uh, really be more exciting. Thanks for listening, everybody. We hope you join us on the next issue of Quick Pilot Topics. Visit avtutorials.com for a free two-hour ebook audiobook titled 12 Easy Ways Pilots Get in Trouble. Remember to listen next week and happy flying.